Hi, my name is Praise Ganiyu and you are welcome to One Soaking Channel, your number one gospel channel in Nigeria, West Africa and in the world at large. Here you are going to be getting messages that will defy you and also build up your spiritual stamina. So kindly subscribe, like, drop your comment and also turn on your notification bell so you can get notified when we drop any other videos. Thank you. The Nigerian church, unknown to many of us here, I'm trying to operate as an interpreter to bring you up to speed with the current technology. We have had a massive Jerusalem experience which have produced so many denominations littered across the nation. But unfortunately, as massive and as wealthy as most of our centers are, it lacks a vital ingredient that will give it the potential of stirring up the purpose of God. First ingredient that it lacked is the apostolic vision. You see, there was an orientation Jesus gave the functionaries. Are you with me? Now, the orientation Jesus gave the functionaries was not about the size of an organization. The emphasis was not to build an organization. The emphasis was to build a people. So when we went to Ghana, we wanted to set up a branch of our ministry in Ghana. And then the pastor came to me and asked me, after the series of meetings that we held in different places, so how are we, this is the question, how are we going to build this organization? I said, bro, you are not here to build any organization. In fact, don't build an organization. Build people. Then if after four years of building people, you still have an organizational question, you can bring it. Let us start with people. One of the challenges of the Jerusalem system in the church in Nigeria is that organizations, massive, high-class organizations, were set up. These organizations are the biggest in the world in terms of Christian organizations. But you see, we can take a cue from such organizations that were built in places like Europe. Such organizations were built in places like the United States of America. If you see the state of some of these nations now, it doesn't look as if there was any strong Christianity at any point in time because the emphasis became organizational. You are not the one praying for Zenith Bank. But Zenith Bank has thrived. In fact, their books are good. The end of year report reveals that they have so much prospect. You are not interceding for First Bank, but they have survived the century. And their current banking momentum suggests that they are even richer than Nigeria. Because I hope you know you are not with me. First Bank is richer than Nigeria. Now, the money we are using to service debt, the compulsory based on treaties and agreements is more than our revenue now. You are not aware. Paying of salaries in Nigeria is no longer sustainable. Okay. Not even federal workers. The, 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 the balance sheet is not in order. It's in red. Everything is red. No parameter is on green. We are red. Not just red, us blood. May the Lord give you understanding. And I need to tell you quickly, because you are not aware, that society is a reflection of the state of the church. Every time. And I got that from the book of Ezekiel chapter 11. I don't have time for a Bible study. To show you how society is a reflection of the church. It's a mirror image of the church. If there's corruption in the society, trust me. The corruption in the church is humongous. If we take the such light, you will see pastors that have slept with pastors' wives. You will see pastors that are sleeping. In fact, many arrangements, immorality arrangements, I mean very intelligent ones. Pastors have rented buildings for mistresses in every state so that when you come, you will think it's prayer. And it is so bad that it's not accepted. 
and then you are you are angry that there's corruption in society no the plumb line is already in darkness so darkness will fill the entire territory that's why if god wants to begin to transform nations he first comes to his house to judge to kill so that he can purge the land as long as light is in his house he will have a platform to stand on to judge the society to judge kings to judge men that have taken the commonwealth of nations but until the church is ready that level of purging will never take place because our god is a righteous god he sees the same rebellion in his house he can't judge it in society are you there all right so big systems so people are laboring to keep systems alive you will hear a pastor say no matter how i go around and preach on sunday i must be back because that's what his senior pastor told him a builder of systems the arrangement in the book of acts just in case you are not aware it's not a systemic kind of arrangement It's an assignment that travels on the hearts of men. I'm not saying that administration in the ministry is not important. If you have looked at our ministry carefully, you will find sufficient administration to support it. Administration is not the ministry. It is possible for you to run administration and all that is left is administration. Administration is supposed to exist only to support the spiritual substance that the ministry is drawn from Are you with me in fact it is recently that we even understood the anointing upon us very well and we built an administration if not before we don't do administration we just they, let the spiritual substance be coming out first then when we understand it we will not know where to put this kind of system to support the spiritual thing for it to be grounded and established but in in systemic emphasis you set up the administration and then you put everyone within the crucible you make a prophet to operate in a certain way you make everybody's they are worshiping the system at that point in time jesus is no longer in control is the spirit behind the system that will determine his potential and if, if, if by any means it becomes massive, it becomes an octopus, a moeba, without shape, anything can possess it and use it as a tool. But that was not a system that Jesus revealed to his people. But the Jerusalem church deviated and set up a system that was more about the administrative workouts. There were four major things that were part of the Jerusalem system. I, and I don't want to trouble you with that. But I'm more concerned about what happened in the book of Acts of the Apostles chapter 13. Because in Acts chapter 13, the new apostolic system was set up. And it is that model that uh, holds the, uh, the framework of the things that God wants to pioneer in the church on the continent of Africa. If you are still with me, say amen. amen. First thing I need to bring to your notice about that model is that the financial system that was responsible to drive that model was partnership financial model. Please help me tell your neighbor partnership. I think I need to show you from Philippians. Are you there in Philippians chapter 4? Verse 15, it says, Now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel when I departed from Macedonia no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving but ye only 
For even in Thessalonica, you sent once and again unto my necessity, because not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. Meanwhile, um, that thing he's talking about in the book of uh, Ephesians chapter 4 verse 17 is heaven's bank account. Every individual member of the body of Christ is supposed to have that account. But my emphasis is not about heavens. I'm just showing you that this. The man said that these things that you have given is not because I came to announce to you that I had a need, but it was in the spirit of responsibility. Knowing that you designed my assignment and you wanted to be a partner with me in the accomplishment of it thereof. He said, this thing that you have done has therefore created a possibility for you to be fruitful in your own account. Let me stop there. Verse 18. But I have, I have all and abound. I am fully received of Epaphroditus, the things which were sent from you an order of a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well pleasing to God. It was to his partners that he said in verse 19 when he personalized God and says my God shall what? supply all your needs no, this scripture is not to everybody he was speaking to his partners and in that scripture the only time Paul personalized God now what does God, Paul mean by my God he was talking about the God that gave him the calling. That same God. Are you there? He personalized God. He said, my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. There are a few points there which um, we cannot attend to. First point is the riches in glory. Uh, that's what we call the central bank of heaven. It's also found in the book of Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. Riches in glory. Now if we go and do a study on that, I will show you heaven's currency. Just like we have Naira, Dollar, Euro. There is a currency by which God funds your destiny. And this partnership that the, the Philippian church had with Paul, made them eligible candidates to withdraw from God's central bank system. It is from that financial height that God sponsors destiny. If we look at your life, we can tell whether you have a bank account to trap the resources that will come from the riches of his glory. There is a currency stronger than the British pound. Hallelujah. Secondly, you will notice that Paul says, my God. And he was referring to the way he knew God personally in the light of his calling. And how the God of covenant had come to his aid again and again when he made demands on his calling. He made demands on his anointing. He made demands on the grace that was at work on his life. He says, it is from that same covenant that I have with God that he will supply your needs. And we know that some of your needs are financial. Some of your needs are material. But he said that that accounting system, that central bank is not only spiritualized, it has capacity to translate into your needs. Are you with me? That's the first system that we see in this new apostolic college that was rising up. If you check the first apostolic college, you'll discover that all of them were Jews. If you are not a certain tribe and you are in that denomination, your, your possibility is already measured. Is Jerusalem more than 
But by the time you come to this model in the book of Acts chapter 13, you will see that, if I'm not mistaken, let me, let me check again. Um, Acts chapter 13. Let me check again. Now they were in the church that was at Antioch, setting prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon, which was called Niger. Okay, there was an Africa on the board. These guys were not Jews. They were not all Jews. Lucius Niger, he was from Cyrene. You still remember Cyrene? Have you gone to the book of Acts of, uh, Acts of the Apostles chapter 2 to check how many people were present on the day of Pentecost? Then Cyrene was explained further. I need to show you, you will not believe it. In Acts chapter 2, Hallelujah. Acts chapter 2. Beginning from verse 7. And they were all amazed and marveled saying one unto another behold are not all these men which speak galileans and how hear we every man in his own tongue where we wherein we were born the parthians and the medes and the elamites and the dwellers in mesopotamia and in judea and cappadocia and in pontius and asia and in Py bigeria and in Pamphylia in Egypt and part of Libya about what? So you will notice that in the council of this new apostolic movement it was diverse because it has the texture of God's scope. God was trying to do something global and that council had that texture. You see, it means that God had gone beyond tribal sentiments in seeking to implement his plan. Are you there? Part of the reason why in their Bible study they taught and said, preach only to Jews, was because all the guys on the conclave were Jews. It was easy to smuggle that sentiment into their doctrinal interests. But you see, the scope was broad from the start. The strategy was known to all of them that what they were trying to set in motion must have the capacity to reach the ends of the earth. Hallelujah. So God has bypassed that Jerusalem structure with all the attendant rivalry that is attributed to denomination. And there's a new thing he's crystallizing in the earth. In fact, according to our understanding of what heaven is doing now and in keeping with the spirit of prophecy that has guided us all these years as Pentecostal Christians in Nigeria, we know that Nigeria has been chosen as a nursery, a nursery to midwife this dimension of emphasis. So there is a new structure in place that I need to educate us about. And it has appendages. It has its own appendages, its own uniqueness. And I'm saying this so that if you are running a kind of system that doesn't have the capacity to accommodate the grace for the season, you can adjust it. Because there is no way a wrong system will produce the right result. But I speak in parables. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for watching. And if this video has blessed you, please like, kindly subscribe, and also tap on the notification bell so you can stay notified and updated on our new videos. And please do not forget to share the link to people so we can bless more people. And most importantly, we want to know how this video has blessed you under the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe.